Okay, here we are back out with the C-A-R. It's been a while, as you guys know. We're doing a lot of traveling lately, but I uh, always do love the look of this vehicle with the yellow, the accelerator yellow, the yellow brakes. It's just awesome. Today, we have so much to talk about when it comes to Corvette news. Now, if you haven't seen any of the footage or videos online, well, uh, Corvette just announced today their all-new all-wheel drive version of this car right next to me, all-wheel drive. The vehicle no longer has to rely on just the two rear wheels, as you can see back here, pushing the vehicle forward, but we're going to have the front wheels actually helping as well. This is going to give the car such amazing 0-60 to 60 results. The thought of an all-wheel drive Corvette uh, launching 0 to 60 out of the day going straight down the quarter mile or getting great 0 to 60 times in general uh, it's exciting it's exciting though the fastest cars 0 to 60s have one thing in common they're usually uh, all-wheel drive a uh, real wheel drive can get you to a certain point extremely respectively <laughs> like we can see with um, a lot of the exotics like the 765 LT McLaren even this car the 0 to 60 is just insane right sub three seconds but then imagining more power, more torque, more instantaneous torque with electric motors, and then four wheel spinning instead of two. That, that's gonna make a huge difference. So I think there's a lot of benefits that can come with all wheel drive, but at the same time there are negatives, and the negatives are things I don't really hear people talk about, and since we do have a lot of a, well we have an emphasis on racing and driving fast on this channel, I, I want to break down a few things I've learned over the years from testing a lot of um, high performance vehicles that are all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive and even hybrids. And I want to give you a proper breakdown because you can't always look at it with, with the minds of every Corvette coming out to be the best car ever made. You've got to analyze which ones, well, the faults and also the, the benefits of each model. So that's what we're going to try to do in this video. Right away, looking straight in front of us, the standard C8 Stingray is a phenomenally balanced vehicle right 500 horsepower roughly rear wheel drive it's got plenty of weight in the rear to get you out of the dig hardcore now that being the engine is sitting between where you sit and also the back wheels but mainly over the back wheels which give the back wheels plenty of weight to not spin on that launch if we take out the factor of being just rear wheel drive and throw an all wheel drive with this vehicle and then instant torque with electric motors usually with hybrid uh, mid-engine supercars the hybrid electric motors they don't make an astronomical difference it's mainly when it comes to for example corner exit or down low in the rpms trying to make like turbo lag not visible with the performance giving you a constant thrust so you don't have to worry about building up the torque uh, with McLaren and their hybrid Artura, they're using the electric motors to give you power all the way through the RPM so you don't realize the lag. For a all-wheel drive hybrid C8, it's most likely going to be giving you that extra torque and power down low to make it feel like you have constant just max power all the time. What you're going to notice is that top end wise, those electric motors are going to start to fade away. And roughly on average, I, I see these electric hybrid in motors um, that work with the gas motors they produce like 100 horsepower maybe two it's nothing usually again astronomical that is why what's interesting about this video is that they actually state how in a, a hybrid a c8 is coming next year and then an all ev so will they be going to the same point as the plaid for their ev i cannot wait to find out if you consider um, a all-wheel drive Corvette, well, that is going to drastically affect the handling of the vehicle. And I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm against it. I'm fully for it. I'm excited to see the, the most advanced uh, Corvettes ever coming out, the future of this brand, because uh, they're not uh, sticking with the past, are they? We have to really cross our fingers that Chevrolet is able to source or build proper electric hybrid motors to go alongside their gas powered engine because uh, sometimes in this marketplace uh, these brands can acquire not the best uh, hybrid engines 
because the technology can't compete always with Tesla and other leading electric brands. Now I'm talking in terms of managing heat, also giving you good feedback as a driver, of charging up quickly, etc. If Chevrolet can manage to build like their all electric Corvette with technology they know is suitable that can compete with the modern electric vehicles, then that's good. What I'm trying to say is that if their electric motors can't match like the Plaid, for example, that's not gonna look so good because having a four-seater uh, sedan beating the Corvette down the quarter mile would be uh, <laughs> not, not very uh, good looking, I'd say, for, for the team. Anyways, the sun is going down. Let me hop inside. Now, for example, when I was in the Mustang Mach-E GT, the performance Mach-E, um, I was in that car on the racetrack and um, the owner got max power rough for the first lap and then after the first lap the power started fading it started going down lap three went down even more lap four went down even more and then it got to a point where there wasn't any more uh, acceleration really the car was uh, capping out and the electric motors were going into uh, well uh, save me mode trying to manage that heat if Chevy can find a way to make these electric motors last lap after lap so you can at least get a good track session and at least come on two uh, without noticing significant losses in power, then that would be good. If they can't, it could be a one-trick pony with that in mind because we're seeing a lot of these electric cars where you can't go out and track them because of after one lap or two lap, you lost all your horsepower and the, the electric motors are overheating. So they're trying to save themselves again. And the hotter you get these engines, the faster they dissipate their energy or their charge. Uh, and that could leave negative effects if you intend on tracking the vehicle. Obviously, the track Corvette is a Z06. I'm not trying to say that uh, this new um, all-electric EV Corvette that it's gonna be track focused first it's, it's not probably uh, but I'm just trying to say in terms of driver enjoyment of a Corvette it'd be nice to get like 20 minutes of fun hard driving out of it without the batteries trying to it's going into safe mode trying to limit the heat and if you look at the hybrid system I think there's um, a lot of potential with a hybrid because you're not relying fully on, on electric power but it's that infusion of the amazing combustion engines that we all know and love, the noises they make. But then when you throw in that instant torque and power and map it out so that it finds its perfect placement within the RPM power band, the car could feel very intuitive. If they manage weight with that, that'll be even better. They haven't really even announced the weight, have they, on the standard Z06. If you look at the Z06, that's going to be the lightest Corvette probably they're making other than the Stingray. The, the weight's probably going to go from here unless they put on carbon fiber components. I'm thinking that the, the hybrid or the all EV um, Corvette, which was announced, they're mainly going to share probably the, the same body or similar components as the Z06. It'd be nice if they changed it up, but you got to realize uh, for a company that, that mass produces these vehicles, I don't think they're going to change too much in terms of looks, but I, I could be wrong. I definitely would like them to change uh, drastically between each model to, to, to differentiate them, if you can explain it that way. Uh, anyway, so one other thing I want to highlight in this video, uh, driving the NSX on Laguna Seca. Uh, what I noticed with it, again, the hybrid power is, is good for the low acceleration, but top end wise, that gas motor is always going to really supersede the electric motor. So it's not like you're going to notice it all the time. I'd say you mainly notice it in terms of the power band when how the car responds and launching out of the dig. If you're a zero to 60 person enthusiast, then you're going to love a all wheel drive system. Uh, going out of a uh, apex of a corner, the car will hook up, uh, I'd say better. They could put down the power. They they definitely can. When I think of all-wheel drive, there are two detriments that come to, come to my mind. And first of which is the weight. You're going to be adding a good amount of weight uh, going to all-wheel drive. And when you start adding weight, that affects the agility of the vehicle. I noticed the weight of the R8 driving it, and I, I really noticed the weight of the NSX tracking it. It's a bigger car. If you're looking at let's say 37 3600 pounds for a z06 maybe 38 with that with the convertible uh a hybrid you could be getting close to like 39 38 
close to 4,000, and that's a lot for a mid-engine performance vehicle. So I think they need to really focus on that weight. They can focus on the weight and manage it. That's a good step. But then after that, they have to tune the vehicles so that the car will rotate in the corners with um, relative ease and be edgy. Lamborghini does a great job with their all-wheel drive system on like the, the standard Huracan that I've driven, and even like the Performante is very intuitive. But the responsiveness, it's not the same as rear wheel drive. I know many of you who um, drive cars fast know, know what I'm talking about. And getting into a corner, for example, with the new R8 competition model, which I'd say is a pretty similar vehicle in terms of performance to what this hybrid all-wheel drive is going to be for the Corvette because uh, when you consider the weight of it, right, um, and then the size and the level of price, mid-100s, it may make sense to me. Getting into a corner, the car sometimes doesn't want to rotate in all the way like a rear wheel drive because you have all four wheels spinning. If they can manage to get a good percentage um, differential on having the rear wheels put down more the power versus the front or allow the car to have a good slip angle into a corner, they can try to fight and counteract some of the negative tendencies for all wheel drive vehicles. I imagine this. In a rear wheel drive car, you get into a corner and you are at the limit, getting close to the limit, or driving fast. You can use the throttle to rotate the vehicle, that being getting on gas or letting off. But since all four wheels are rotating, getting on gas in an all wheel drive vehicle can sometimes push you outwards, right? Because all four wheels are spinning, not making the car rotate in more with the front into a corner. Therefore, you can get more understeer with all-wheel drive vehicles. Torque vectoring I've seen with vehicles like, like the NSX, uh, and it helps. Again, I I'm very excited about this new vehicle, so please don't um, comment below saying I'm being negative about it or anything like that. I am an enthusiast, but I like to be very analytical and break things down. I cannot wait for this new car, so, so please don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to analyze and see, okay, what are the, the, the benefits and what are the downfalls? Let, let's see how it goes, and I cannot wait to give you guys my feedback and review of how it performs. Now, I apologize if this comes off as too performance-focused, because that's kind of like... Um, I'm a geek. I'm a geek about all that stuff. There's so much space in this car. You have this huge tunnel that's hollowed out. You have all that space behind you. They can make an EV mid-engine uh, mounted uh, Corvette, having the electric motor behind you, giving you a better weight balance, like um, Lotus. The new Lotus all-electric um, hypercar, right? The engine is sitting behind you, giving you that uh, mid-engine balance again. And there's tons of space up front as well. Anyways, gonna start up the Corvette and. Uh, Head out. This thing sounds so good. I'm happy they're doing hybrid first because we can still get the gas motor if we want to. And then if you're an all-out track enthusiast, Z06 is the way to go. Can I cannot wait for that car? I kind of getting a bit bit bored of the wait. Uh, I know many of you feel the same way. Hopefully it ends soon. That'll be great to see in here. So thanks for watching this video if you liked it. Make sure to hit that like button to help me out and subscribe for much more great videos coming out your way. Please let me know what do you think of my analysis of um, the benefits and the detriments for these new powertrain systems and uh, the way Chevy is going at everything. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thanks for watching again. I'll see all of you in the next episode.